into possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia apparently resulting in charges. At least one person could be taken into custody as early as Monday in connection with special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. No names or charges are spelled out in a Wall Street Journal report citing anonymous sources. Fox's Kathleen Maloney, the special counsel's office, has declined to comment. There's also been no comment from the White House. Democrats may have finished it, but conservatives apparently started the investigation into President Trump's past that ultimately produced that much-talked-about dossier. The Opposition Research Project that produced the controversial dossier linking President Trump to Russia was initially started by the conservative Washington Free Beacon website. The editor-in-chief and chairman putting out a statement saying that the Beacon had hired Fusion GPS to do research on several presidential candidates in 2016, but they're denying they had anything to do with former British spy Christopher Steele, who put the final dossier together. They're claiming they had left the project before Steele joined it. The Washington Post says the Democratic National Committee paid for the finished product. Fox says Jill Nato. There could be clashes in two towns in Tennessee where white nationalist rallies are being held today. Authorities in both Murfreesboro and Shelbyville are asking demonstrators and counter-demonstrators to respect each other's rights. A suicide car bomb outside a hotel in Somalia's capital was the work of al-Shabaab, the terror group claiming responsibility for the blast that police say killed at least 10 people. The attack comes two weeks after a truck bomb in Mogadishu killed more than 350 people. Fox News, fair and balanced. Bringing new meaning to the term first responders. Fellow community members stepping forward, volunteering their time to help others faced with what might be some of the most traumatic incidents in their lives. It's called the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP. It's been used in communities across the United States for years, and its volunteers have been dispatched to provide what they call emotional first aid. A collaboration between police, paramedics, fire departments, and even hospital staff is making sure residents are emotionally taken care of in a time of crisis. Residents are volunteering their time with the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP, dispatched to the scene of a fire, accident, or death to focus on the emotional needs of those left behind. It's just being there and being comforting, like a good friend or an extension of your family. Ready to assist, sit and listen to community members in a time of tragedy. To learn more about the Trauma Intervention Program, visit yubasuttertip.org or call 673-9300. Action in Massachusetts to multiple allegations of sexual harassment within state government. Massachusetts State House Speaker Robert DeLeo saying he's infuriated and deeply saddened that 12 women professionally associated with the State House were not only harassed, but were afraid to report it. The Speaker responding to a column Friday in the Boston Globe. A dozen lobbyists and staff saying over the past two decades, male lawmakers routinely touched their bodies, threatened their careers, and demanded sex. Governor Charlie Baker also saying he's appalled and saddened. Similar charges also prompting harassment policy reviews in the state houses of California, Rhode Island, and Illinois. In Boston, Bill Marcus, Fox News.
After getting locked in a convenience store cooler, a Wisconsin man started drinking, and police say that was the wrong decision. Cooling his heels inside the Quick Trip convenience store cooler, a 38-year-old man in Marshfield, Wisconsin. A customer spotted him inside around 6 in the morning Wednesday. When employees opened the door, he took off. Police caught up with him. He told them he went to the store to buy beer, got locked in the cooler just before midnight on Tuesday, figured he'd make the best of it, knocking back a beer and three more malt beverages. Cops citing him for retail theft, noting the cooler had a glass door, which he could have knocked on instead of knocking back that beer. Jane Nutzler, Fox News. A bird is likely to blame for a rocky charter flight carrying members of the NBA's Oklahoma City Thunder. Last night while traveling to Chicago from Minneapolis, something hit the nose of the Delta Airlines plane, damaging it and prompting players like Carmelo Anthony to tweet about it. Nobody was hurt. The plane landed safely. Delta Airlines is investigating. Pam Puso, Fox News Radio. This is Laura Ingram. Join me every weekday morning on The Patriot. Stay tuned live with Lou is next. Don't touch that dial. America voted for change. And so now Van Jones and a bunch of other people are saying, oh, it's a white lash. It's white people. They're so mean. They don't like blacks. Bull crap. Black people didn't want Hillary Clinton. Latinos didn't want her. It was America who voted for Trump. So stop making this about white people. There are plenty of blacks and Hispanics and people of every stripe who said no to the progressivism and the transgender bathrooms, the higher taxes, the craptastic foreign policy, the millions of billions of dollars going to war, the leaving of our own veterans at home untaken care of. America said it's time to get back to regular operational standards, which means we're going to stop focusing on our body parts and start focusing on jobs, the economy, and keeping this country on the right track. This is not about color or race. We're going to stop talking about that all the time and start talking about what actually matters. We're Americans first. We're not the sum of our individual body parts and skin tones. I can't wait to see what happens when we actually get back to focusing on the main issues in this country. We won. I'm so glad about it. It's not a white thing. It's not a black thing. It's an American thing. And if you're crying and talking about going to Canada, please hurry up and go. We have work to do here, and we don't want to be bothered by you whining and talking about how you're leaving. Just go. The Canadians will be happy to have your leftist butts. Until then, we made America great again. We're in the process. Praise God. Thank God Trump won. Well, good morning. This is Lou Benninger. And I hope you're having a good Saturday morning. We are. We're uh, sitting out here on Mount Huth, uh, Wikiman Santos Vigil and I. And uh, I was expecting some rain by now so I can, like, throw my rig into four-wheel drive and slosh up the mountain. But uh, we're just rolling right out here. Reminds me of those cool days when the Occupy Wall Street people used to protest and we used to get the free donuts brought in. It's just been, you know, just was nostalgic driving up here today. So uh, thanks for listening. If you don't know what you're listening to, this is the Patriot KMYC, 1410 AM. We're broadcasting out of Northern California in Yuba County. It's one of 58 counties in California, one of the poorest counties. But it's nice up here. It's beautiful up here. And we got some lakes and rivers and it's rural Uba, rural California. It's part of the state of Jefferson. Uh, as soon as we get squared away with all the legalities, we'll have maybe over 20 counties of California separate off into a 51st state, the state of Jefferson, where uh, people have freedom again. You can pack your weapons. You can have uh, far less regulations far less bureaucracy, just less government, kind of like the founding fathers thought about, kind of a novel idea, don't you think? Today, uh, we have a government that doesn't resemble anything like the founders uh, hoped for and designed. We actually have a government that controls uh, every move we make. We have a government that, that ignores the Constitution and uh, has taken over education, 
has taken over charity. We call it welfare. Has taken over almost every area where people were in local communities were supposed to exert their personal responsibility. <clears throat> and, uh, and occasionally somebody said, well, that's not constitutional. Most of what government is doing is unconstitutional. So uh, if you want to listen today in another fashion other than by the radio, some people are saying, Lou, we like to listen better on YouTube now because the quality is better. Uh, so if you're having a hard time hearing us, it, it has some static or whatever. You can go on to one eye blind media. You spell out all the words, one eye blind media. That's on YouTube. It's a YouTube channel. And then just look up playlists and look up live with Lou and pick your uh, show you want to listen to that. So we're not there yet today. It'll be on probably later this weekend or Monday. But you can listen at your leisure, and it's uh, really they everybody is <clears throat> uh, complimenting us about Chris Starkey's work of uh, just really great quality, and it's even a shorter show. And they purge some of the uh, the commercials out and uh, some other things, so it's a shorter listen. So if that's your pleasure, go there. You can also uh, usually we have live stream available, but somebody was even saying yesterday to me that sometimes the live stream works for a while and then it doesn't. So I, when people say that to me, I said, you know, you're talking to the wrong guy because I have no control over those things. But on KMYCRadio.com, KMYCRadio.com, you can click on the listen live button and you can, you can hear it clear if you're working off your computer. So you can call us uh, at 742-5555. Someone said to me the other day, oh, you don't give that number out. And I thought, well, I do at the start of the show, and then I just forget about it. I get so uh, ADHD out here. And, of course, you know, I, I did drugs for a few years, so I'm sure I did some brain damage. So I just kind of am working with what I'm, I'm working with what's left. So 530-742-5555 if you want to leave us a message or talk to Santos or maybe want to talk on the radio. But we are pro-choice, and like uh, uh, being pro-choice and aborting babies, we, are, uh, we don't want to let this interfere with my radio career. So if I think that your call may, may lower the quality of my life, I would have to reject that. And, uh, or if you're the wrong gender, it may not be some days. I may want, not want any females or other days, males. It may just, you know, you may be the wrong gender on that particular day. And I may not be able to take the call or just poor timing in my life. You know, it's, uh, sometimes people call and I've already talked about that and moved on. So, but you can take a shot at it. Some people call and just leave a message or uh, leave it, leave some information. Maybe they think I didn't, I left something out. I, I need some more, I need to pass on more information to you. So I wanted to mention before we get started, there's going to be a, a really great, uh, theatric performance out at the uh, the, the creative light theater operates out of the church of glad tidings campus on Howie 99 eager road. And they have a uh, play that's original uh, modern musical, they call it, called The Ripple Effect. It says, experience the epic links. God will go for the love of one person and the effect of love on the people along the way. It has to do with uh, people making some wrong decisions in life and some difficulties and, and how God just helps people. All these plays out there are free. They usually take kind of a collection to help offset some of the staging costs and all the things that are built and clothing and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, it's, there are plays that you can bring their, your kids to. And so you can interact with the play. They're pretty cool. So it's going to be from December 8th through the 12th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 7 PM every night, the ripple effect. And, uh, so you good way to kick off the holiday season. And man, I just realized, I think next week, is it next? No, not next week. Maybe a couple of weeks from now, uh, is Thanksgiving. So if you like that, I always like Turkey. So they can, I'll eat Turkey any day of the week. It doesn't have to be Turkey day. 
So happy uh, happy Saturday to you. It's a nice day out there. Hopefully you can get out and enjoy it nice and cool this morning. I wanted to mention an email that I got from a friend of mine uh, that I've traveled to Vietnam with a number of times, and uh, that is Jerry Sebum. Jerry and his wife, Deanne, run a mortgage business down in Sacramento, and they're my age, and they're, and he was in the Vietnam War, Jerry. And uh, Jerry, uh, his hobby, besides uh, his business, his hobby is to help Viet, uh, vets of all flavors, whether they're Vietnam vets or Desert Storm or wherever. He helps them uh, get their, their veterans' benefits. And isn't that sad that, that people – that have served this country, particularly in conflict, can't get benefits and can't get the services that they were promised by the Veterans Administration. And of course, we had eight years of uh, President Barbara Obama, and uh, basically, she didn't care about vets. So nothing really happened to improve the care of vets, and they just died waiting to get waiting to get services from veterans hospitals that we paid for as taxpayers to make sure our veterans got the best of care. So it isn't the public's fault. It's politicians' fault, which is all the problems we have actually in America today. It's how they're being handled by politicians. But Jerry helps because he is uh, fastidious and he's determined and he's patient and he knows how to get through the system, and he helps people, even folks that are on the streets, get their veterans' benefits and, and get into a house and, and get the medical care they need. Anyway, Jerry sent me this, and he it says, if you were ever in combat, in fact, oh, let me just say this about Jerry because it might be more meaningful. Uh, Jerry uh, was wounded in Vietnam and left Vietnam minus one eye. So... Uh, that's, you know, obviously has lived with that uh, and has a glass eye. And uh, so he, he left part of himself in that country. And he says if you've ever uh, been in combat and were the last person to pull up the zipper on a body bag of your fallen comrade in arms, you would never think to be this reckless in your attitude towards the American flag. It just would not and could not be done. If these fine athletes want to put up or shut up, then rather than taking a knee, they should just not show up for work and protest. So he's announcing, uh, by sending this email on, he's announcing a national boycott of the National Football League uh, that's planned for Sunday, November 12th. That day is significant because it's Veterans Day weekend. Uh, and regardless of what anyone says about taking a knee, it's really an offense uh, against the veterans and law enforcement of our country, uh, regardless of what they say. Uh, and so there's a move on to boycott all football telecasts. They're asking for all fans, all ticket holders, uh, to stay away from attending or viewing any NFL games on Sunday, the 12th of November. And it says, uh, let the NFL play to empty stadiums. Now, one of the NFL players, I can't recall his name, but I watched him, uh, give a little talk on Facebook and he said, Hey, you don't want to attend the games. Don't. And I thought, I like that. It's the same way I feel about lots of things. Uh, I buy my coffee at places I like and, and avoid other places I don't like. I buy food and go to restaurants I like and avoid other places I don't like. So every day I vote with my dollars where I want to, uh, the businesses and organizations I want to encourage, and then I stay away from the businesses that I want to discourage. Don't hate them, just don't want to be among them. So uh, it says here, honor our military some of whom came home with the American flag draped over their coffin, continue with the weekly boycott of televised games, but let's make this a day, that's November 12th, that the owners, coaches, players, and advertisers will never forget. Uh, 
finishes by saying they have a right to protest if they want to, but during the national anthem is not the time or the venue. They show an utter lack of patriotism and total disrespect for our veterans living and dead and everything for which they put their lives on the line for. So, uh, Jerry, I just want to say I appreciate your service to this country, Jerry Sebum, and all those who uh, served in any of the conflicts that the um, that America has got into. Whether you liked us getting into them or not, Americans went over there and did their duty. So uh, there you have it. Uh, I'm thrilled every time. I, actually, I'm thrilled that this whole thing has come about. What it did was it revealed the true heart of those who are making bajillions of dollars for running around on a field and playing a game. And uh, sometimes you're just better to keep your mouth shut because once they opened it, it costs them all some money. And uh, we'll see how this all pans out, but uh, it just encouraged me. I used to be a sports addict. I used to, when I had a television, I just watched sports, sports, sports. I love sports. I love competition, played sports in school. Loved it and uh, loved to watch wa uh, live sports, but I'm kind of done. I they I'm kind of over. They burnt their bridges with me, and I've moved on and uh, don't even have any regrets. So there you have it. I wanted to mention that uh, there's some news, some interesting news this week about the Tea Party. And uh, it came out of the Attorney General's Office of the United States of America. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But it actually, this uh, decision by Jeff Sessions to settle with uh, lawsuits with hundreds of organizations that sued the government over Barack Obama's IRS harassment of conservative organizations in order to keep them from from uh being involved in politics and and uh campaigning and working against some of his ideas in government so what he did is he unleashed the uh harassment of the internal revenue service on a number of conservative organizations so if they had christian names or if they had names that had tea party or patriot or anything uh involved in that in the name they would uh stymie or put their applications for a 501c4 exemption on the shelf and then they harass them by asking them very uh they asked them questions about the organization that violated their, their first amendment rights and uh a number of rights actually and then they harassed people that were involved in some of these organizations are leading them like they would sick the FBI on their businesses or OSHA or one of the other uh, government entities that harasses business. And so uh, Barack Obama and Eric Holder were involved in that with Lois Lerner and the IRS. They lied about it. They lied every single day, all these people. So uh, once Sessions came in here they have settled and I'll, I'll talk about that in details but the reason i bring it up is because uh the sutter buttes tea party patriots in their original form i don't know what the original name was but at one time there was one tea party in yuba and sutter counties and then uh, they had a dispute and they broke up into two tea parties and so we ended up with one in, U in Sutter County, one in Yuba County. And the one in, I don't know that much about how much difficulty the one in Sutter County had, but the one in Yuba County was really harassed by the IRS. And there was a fellow that, that led it. I think his name was Craig Christensen. Is that the name? Do you remember that? He used to call my, uh, Tom Sullivan down in uh, when Tom Sullivan was in Sacramento. But anyway, I've talked to the treasurer of the the tea party that operated out of the veterans center in Marysville. And she said that they were not only harassed by the IRS, uh, 
but they were fined by the IRS, I believe, $8,000. had to pay $8,000 in taxes to the IRS. And here they were a legitimate nonprofit just wanting to meet together to be informed on what's going on in the country. And they were really harassed. Uh, and I don't know whether they are a part of these lawsuits. On my hunch is they probably aren't, and they probably lost their money. That was all good-hearted donations from members. But I remember talking to Craig Christensen, and I think I even talked to him on the air years ago when this started, and he talked about all the harassment. For instance, the IRS would ask for all the donors and a list of all the donations, and then they would want to know all the donors, uh, what groups they were affiliated with. In other words, they just kept asking. As soon as you would ask, answer those questions, and they'd send you another list of questions, and they just bureaucratically beat you to death. And uh, so anyway, I, I wanted to mention that the Sutter Butte's Tea Party Patriots, which meets out at the Church of Glad Tidings campus in Building 200, they meet on the first and third, third uh, Mondays of each month. And so... Uh, this Monday night, is it this Monday night? November, it's November 6th. It's not this Monday night. It's November 6th is the first Monday night of the month. And uh, you might have, if you listened to the last show here earlier, uh, Nate Black was talking. He's the Sutter County Auditor Controller. And uh, he is your independently elected as, as well as all the, or most of the auditor controllers. Yuba County and Sutter County auditor controllers are elected by the people. They, they are the eyes and ears on your finances. So it, when the supervisors go nutso, uh, they have someone looking over their shoulder saying, that ain't right. What you're doing is that ain't right. And Nate already got involved in that with him uh, when he first took over the office from a guy named Robert Stark who spent 30 years fighting with uh, people that were dishonest uh, in the, the county of Sutter and ripped the people of Sutter County off in 2004 by raising their pensions without proper notification and due diligence. Well, Nate Black is going to be speaking uh, at the November 6th Sutter Beach Tea Party Patriots meeting. Starts at 6.30, but get there at 6, throw back some coffee, or some uh, water or juice or whatever. They have some refreshments. And uh, you don't need to be a member. You could just dip in for to listen to Nate. If you want to find out about the homeless situation, the fiasco that's going on, we're going to talk about that later, the homeless situation in Sutter County, the internal audit of the county, um, or CalPERS, the, the pension debt, $150 million pension debt for little old Sutter County. You can ask all the questions you want. Nate will answer them there. In fact, a lot of the supervisors don't like Nate being outspoken. Isn't that something? We're, you know, when they want to get elected, they're talking about, oh, we're gonna we're for transparent government. Oh, we want we're gonna we want things wide open. Any call me anytime. Just here's my number. Call me anytime. You can write me. Call me. I'm a good guy. I'm transparent. Then when Nate's transparent, it's like, hey, how come you're doing that? They call him up, kind of threaten him, like Scott Mitnick, the county administrator, kind of threatened. Nate Black, right? Uh, so that's kind of his MO from down there at Thousand Oaks, threatening people, right? I want to fight. I don't like the way my baseball team's going where my kids are playing. I'm going to threaten want fi people fired over there in that school district where they're, uh, where they're involved. That's his MO, but they, uh, now he's our county administrator. So we're going to uh, take a little break here, a couple commercials. We'll be back. we got an hour and a half. Give a shout out to Sun City down in Lincoln. A bunch of those people are listening down there. I found out last week they bought some gun tickets from me and gave me a shout. I thought, I didn't even know you could hear me from down there. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> This is Life Issues with Brad Mattis, president of Life Issues Institute. The abortion industry and activists have long lamented the number of abortion mills closing in so-called red states where pro-life governors and legislatures have been elected. 
But in a recent article, Madeline Schwartz says they're closing in liberal blue states, too. And the reason given is plain economics. In part, the demand for abortion has fallen, which is a great thing. Shauna Heckert, an executive over six abortion mills in liberal California, is expecting some will close. We're a dying breed, she says. I say better their business dies than millions of innocent unborn babies and sometimes their moms. All the while, Planned Parenthood is growing and putting the little guys out of business. All the more reason we must take their half billion annual tax funding away. Follow us on Twitter at Life Issues USA and stay informed, more informed than you've ever been. Check out the Territorial Dispatch. Papers are weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscription. It's only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch, which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic, and weather information, along with a calendar of local events. Visit the E-Territorial at at eterritorial.com. Hello, Liberty-loving patriots. This is Chrissy Ann Hall, Liberty's lobbyist and founder of Liberty First University. You're listening to Live with Lou on KMYC 1410 AM, The Patriot. The founding fathers and mothers didn't pledge their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor, so we could sit around and rest on their laurels. They expected us to exercise our God-given rights, and to practice eternal vigilance, to monitor and hold accountable our fellow citizens to whom we delegate power. The federal government is not the supreme law of the land. The Constitution is. To learn more about the Constitution, and to help Lou and me get the word out about how our founders truly wanted this republic to operate, be sure to tune in to Live with Lou every Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon. Visit me at chrisannhall.com and at libertyfirstuniversity.com. The Harvey Weinstein sex abuse scandal caused many men to feel a new sympathy for mistreated women until feminists started talking about it and then we stopped feeling sympathy and just felt sort of annoyed. One feminist named Helen Rosner has issued a series of tips on Twitter for how men can support women that are guaranteed to make men never want to support women ever again. I am not making this up, these are her real tips. Helen Rosner's tip number one for how men should react to the Harvey Weinstein scandal is overcome your transphobia because trans women are women. This is an excellent tip, except for the fact that trans women are not women and nobody's phobic about them and they have nothing to do with Harvey Weinstein. Other than that, it's great. Tip number two is be pro-abortion. I guess this is important because if you molest the woman you work with and she becomes pregnant, you want to be able to kill the baby. That'd be a big improvement. Tip number three, ask your workplace if tampons and pads are free. When they explain to you that nothing is free, ask women to go out and pay for their own damn tampons and pads. Tip number six, and I'm still not making these up, tip number six is whenever you are in a group of only men, ask yourself why. I already know why, so I don't have to listen to crap like this. Tip number seven, cultivate genuine, intimate, non-sexual friendships with women. I have no idea what that means. I'm not even sure it's in English. Tip number eight, seek out women to be your heroes and mentors. <laughs> it's famous, they cracked me up. Tip number 12, when you need support, reach out to men as well as women. Create a culture of openness around yourself. If you're gay, if you're not gay, don't do this, you'll get punched in the face. Tip number 16, do everything you can to empower black women and NBWOC. NBWOC, of course, stands for Nibwok. They're those furry little creatures from the Star Wars movies. Apparently, they're oppressed. And tip number 17, befriend children. Unless they're in the womb, then kill them. So, friends, if you, like me, feel outraged and disgusted by Harvey Weinstein, just read these helpful feminist tips, and you'll just kind of forget the whole thing and go about your business. Thanks, feminists. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Clavin. We are witnesses to the most ruthless attack on a president and the people who voted for him, and the free system that allowed it to happen in American history. From the highest levels of government to their media, universities, and billionaires, their hateful defiance of his legitimacy is an insult to each of us. 
but the ultimate insult is that they think we're so stupid that we'll let them get away with it. These saboteurs slashing away with their leaks and sneers, their phony accusations and gagging sanctimony, drive their daggers through the heart of our future, poisoning our belief that honest custody of our institutions will ever again be possible, so they can then build their utopia from the ashes of what they burned down. No, their fate will be failure, and they will perish in the political flames of their own fires. We are the National Rifle Association of America, and we are freedom's safest place. All right. Well, before the break, we were talking about the Sutter Buttes Tea Party Patriots, and they are going to have a meeting coming up in... Uh, November 6th, the first Monday of November, with Nate Black, the auditor-controller of Sutter County there. <clears throat> Everybody should go to that. Nate is a sharp guy, <clears throat> and uh, I like him because he's honest. I, even if people aren't the best speakers, if they're honest, that gets my attention. But he's a good speaker, and he's very knowledgeable what what's shaken with the county and the state. And, it, and he is a... Uh, as you might assume, he's a trained CPA, so uh, he knows what's going on financially. But also at that meeting, uh, Bill Beeler, who's one of the leaders out there at the Patriots, Tea Party Patriots, uh, Bill is kind of one of these hippie guys from from the 60s, and he, he's kind of hung on to the hair, but it ain't there ain't much there now, nowadays. It's kind of like me. I tell people, you know, when I became a Christian, all my hair fell out. I thought, I wonder if this is a, that's a bad sign right there when this parts, body parts start falling off. So a lot of Bill's hair has come to pass. And so he, what's left, it's really long. So they're auctioning off who gets to cut it, I think. But they're going to cut his hair. But I was thinking today when I was getting ready for the show, maybe we should all chip in and, like, get him a wig, one of those toupees, right? And, and just do the full deal where he could have the ponytail and the whole deal. Anyway, they're also, they're, they're doing an ammo raffle out there that uh, a variety of ammo, like nine millimeter, 223, 22 uh, LR. And, uh, and so they're, they're selling tickets for that. They're going to do a drawing on December four. So you can get in on that as well. So go on out there, Sutter Beach tea party on November 6th. And, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty dynamic meeting because this homeless thing is getting gnarly over there in Sutter County and Yuba County. And politicians, it's interesting. Politicians are really tight with their own money, but they get all drunk and loosey goosey with your money. Isn't that something like that? So, uh, so I was talking, uh, before about the Obama administration coming after conservative organizations to the IRS. Was that shocking to you? I mean, I've worked with the IRS. I've done, had full audits from the IRS when I ran a business. And uh, I thought IRS people were just honest people that just tried to keep the nuts and bolts of the financial end of this country together, like make everybody pay the same amount, be fair, be honest, da 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 and their IRS agents, etc. I knew I knew some IRS agents. So to have the IRS being used as a political club to beat up people was amazing to me, and it it's actually pretty scary when you think about it. And then to realize that OSHA, which is supposed to be involved in uh, workplace safety, was and the FBI were being used as political clubs to harass. Uh, torment and beat up people's private businesses and finances was uh it's frankly it's scary it's it's the exact thing that the government that the our founding fathers said we needed to take guns out and shoot those people and take the government back over and put them out of business that's exactly why the second amendment was put uh was not only an amendment, but it was, it was, it wasn't just like, Oh, they just thought of it. They were affirming what they believed was the only people's, the people's only recourse to a government that had lost its mind. And you know, the only reason we were not more freaked out about it, it's, it's been a, a gradual process and you've just become a socialist country 
and you didn't notice it happened because you didn't wake up one day and it went from a really free country to a really totally controlled country. So what's happened is uh, the uh, Don Trump's administration settled two class action lawsuits just last week filed by conservative Tea Party groups that alleged that President Obama's Department of Justice discriminated against them due to their ideological commitments. Now, one of the things about this country is that people could have different points of view and not be punished, right? That's what's unique about this country. At least it's protected in law. Whether it's protected in practical outworkings, not necessarily, like locally. Like, for instance, when I write an article or I speak about something on the radio, many people uh, choose not to be involved with me in other things that I do in the community because they don't like what I say or what I do. So that happens in everyday life, just like I don't shop, like I don't spend my money at Starbucks, right, because I don't like their stances, right? And I don't shop at certain businesses because I don't want to support what they believe in, right? It's okay. I'm with you. It's all right. But when the government, the, our government agencies do that, that's amazing. Like, for instance, when Larry Munger, supervisor representing the area around the city of Sutter, is prejudiced and biased against the dollar store and calls them effers, now, that's exactly what happened here with the IRS. They used the power and the club of government to hammer hundreds, hundreds, not 100, not 200, not 300, 400, 500, maybe 1,000, but in 41 groups and another uh, 428 plaintiffs filed on this. And, and honestly, I, I bet most of them didn't. They just thought, hey, I'm glad that, I'm glad that, that uh, corrupt administration is gone. So the targeting scandal, if you'll remember, emerged in 2013. Uh, in other words, it surfaced. It, it had been going on. But finally, the Treasury, and, Treasury Inspector General for tax administration released a report exposing the intentional delay of tax exempt status application filed by conservative groups. They didn't bother liberal groups, right? And of course, uh, Barack Obama said he didn't know anything about it. He heard about it in the newspaper, right? I'm always, in fact, I just saw where Nancy Pelosi heard about something in the newspaper. I think it was the collusion with Russia. Now that the Democrats, right? It's like, I don't know. These people don't have any advantage on information than I do. I'm always watching the media for stuff. So court documents revealed that the IRS admitted wrongdoing and they apologized for their uh, corrupt conduct. Interesting. So uh, I don't know how much money, actual money is involved. These people are all going to get money uh, to compensate them for the harassment. So the House Judiciary Committee released internal Obama DOJ, Department of Justice, emails that revealed the agency selectively fun Oh, this is the second part of it. So the first part of it was the Obama administration selectively attacked conservative groups. Then the Department of Justice went after the banks who they thought were using discriminatory procedures and giving out loans and fined them. And you know what they did with the money? Instead of putting it in the money where Congress would put it in the bank, where Congress would decide where to, where to put that money and maybe give it back to the, the people that were damaged, the Obama administration by emails selectively funneled big banks a billion dollars to liberal nonprofits uh, to the exclusion of conservative nonprofits. So on one hand, they were criminally attacking conservative nonprofits. On the other hand, they were they were sending billions of dollars to people like La Raza. You know, have you ever heard of La Raza, the cause, uh, the Hispanic group that wants to take back California and turn it into a state of Mexico. So they dished out money to 
uh, these liberal groups. And so that's also a violation. And Jeff Sessions, uh, Attorney General or Department of Justice, has now stopped that, that any money that's ever taken from a business because of penalties, because of wrongdoing, now has to be put before the Congress to let the Congress sort out where, where that money is going to go, as opposed to it being a slush fund for political purposes. So now what's happening is uh, we're seeing as emails are being uncovered and documents are being revealed, how corrupt uh, the administration has been, the previous administration, at using the government not only to benefit liberal causes, but to actually undermine and attack conservative people. Not just politicians, but people that just are hardworking people that just want to have a nonprofit group like the Tea Party. Isn't that interesting? Now, I don't know. Again, I don't know whether I'm going to have to. I didn't have time to email one of the local Tea Party people from Yuba County to see whether they were in on this and maybe they will get some uh, payback. Uh, if I was them, I would, I would ask the, the IRS to give them back their money. I don't know whether they'll ever get it, but it's worth asking. But uh, there was also an email that suggested that they wanted to avoid, like they find Citibank millions and millions of dollars. And one of the emails from the Department of Justice under Eric Holder was, it says this, quote, concerns include not allowing City or Citibank to pick a nationwide intermediary like the Pacific Legal Foundation, that's a conservative group. Uh, in other words, they could make a contribution towards a group like that, but they forbid them to give to a conservative group. So they told these banks, the only groups you can give to are groups that we choose, like La Raza or other liberal groups. So pretty interesting stuff, but at least uh, Jeff Sessions is uh, – is getting at some of the corrupt activities that the uh, the Obama administration did and and did it with glee. Do you remember all the times that Obama said that? Oh, he just heard about that Benghazi. Oh, he just he didn't know anything about it. He just heard it on the news. IRS scandal. Oh, I just heard it on the news. Solyndra bankruptcy. Oh, I just heard it on the news. Have no idea all that stuff. So maybe you've been following the fiasco that uh, County Administrative Officer Scott Mitnick from Thousand Oaks, California, because he really doesn't reside here. His family never has come here. Uh, he's up here just cleaning up his resume until he can uh, feel like he can get a job in a better spot, like back down Southern California where he likes but he needed to, uh, you know, he's kind of on probation up here because he got kicked to the curb down there for uh, all kinds of uh, misdeeds by the Thousand Oaks City Council. So now he's up here uh, doing penance until he can score a job somewhere else. So the supervisors say that that's, he's the best guy out of the group that the headhunters presented to, him, to them that they could find. But they could have gone out and asked the headhunters, said, listen, uh, throw the net back in the water and see if you can get another kettle of fish up here to choose from because that one isn't good enough for us. Now, the, the professional panel that was formed, they, they formed a citizen's panel and a professional panel. And my understanding is they didn't inform the citizen's panel what the professional panel concluded, which was thumbs down on Scott Mitnick. So the citizen's panel felt deceived by uh, the, the uh, local the supervisors, the people running the deal. And it seems like maybe that Supervisor Whitaker and Supervisor Flores were the ones that wanted Mitnick and kind of just pushed him through. So now we have him. And so he's been pushing and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, as you're reading the paper, they talk about, well, we want to take this 100000 or this 500000 and we're going to do this and that. Actually, we've already spent 
hundreds of thousands of dollars in staff time in the department of, in, in the county of Sutter in the various departments to formulate a plan to uh, give more and more and more and more money to people that don't want to fit into the system. You know that? You know, when you live in a city, you kind of have to share some values, right? Like, I got to get along with my neighbor. I live in the city of Marysville, and I have neighbors really close on both si- on all three sides of me. I have a street in front of me, but behind me I have a business, and then on each side I have, I have, bit, I have a house on one side, and I have a sixplex on the other, and I have to get along with them, right? So you have to you have to like have some grace in your life to live in the city, right? And you have to follow the rules. Like I don't dump my garbage out, out in the street and I don't make noise at night. I kind of get, try to get along with everybody, keep up my yard, etc. But some people don't want to fit into that shared value system, right? Other shared values of we, we obey the traffic laws and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Right? <clears throat> so there are, always in any society, there are people who don't want to share those values and they want to do whatever they want to do. <clears throat> so that's a problem, right? Particularly when they don't, when they want to violate the law. So sometimes they get arrested. The other group that is, is a, a, a situation like this is where people, they don't want to work, but they want a handout, right? They don't want to work, but they want a handout. So I say, often that the government has actually created the homeless problem and the reason and the way that the government and the reason I say that and the way the government has done that is by giving handouts with no accountability uh, to people in other words we're going to give you money we're going to give you food we're going to pay for your housing we're going to pay for your education and we're going to pay for your medical but we you don't have to do anything we say there's no accountability in fact, we're not even Sutter County. They don't even check where people live. You can give a false address and get welfare over there. And they won't even file a welfare fraud claim against you and take you before the, the courts. And so what happens is then people, uh, you know, we would never do this with our children. We would never raise our children and give them whatever they want and not expect anything of them. Otherwise, you would end up with a 34-year-old still wanting you to cook them pancakes in the morning. And... Uh, and wipe their bottom, right? And clean their clothes for them and lay their clothes out for them. Treat them like a little kid. But we're treating people like children. And uh, so then when you don't give them what they want, what do they do? They, you ever see people, kids throw a tantrum in the grocery store because mom won't buy them a box, a couple boxes of Snickers. Uh, and that's just what we've done with the homeless. So I, I got a kick out of it because my Uh, I have a son-in-law that's a sheriff's deputy in uh, Orange County. And I noticed an article that said that sheriff's deputies made 180 arrests in the Santa Ana Riverbed. And I said, oh, that sounds kind of familiar, except our sheriffs won't go into uh, our homeless camps here uh, over in Sutter County. They say we're not going to arrest ourselves out of this. So the sheriff's department went down into the Santa Ana Riverbed and they uh, made a contact with over a thousand homeless people over a period of time, this over a period of time, not one day. And they made 180 arrests. And I thought, Oh, uh, I wonder, I wonder what kind of arrests they made. So, um, here's some of the, the crimes that they arrested people that they just went down and they interviewed people, right? And they said, Hey, we got some help for you. You can go over to this rehab. You can go to this shelter. You can go over here, you can go over there, but you're not going to be able to stay down here, right? Because once it starts raining, that Santa Ana riverbed fills up with water. So here's what they found. They found people that uh, were wanted for crimes of robbery, domestic violence, sexual offenses, and violating probation or violating parole. Uh, So uh, they arrested them. Now, it's interesting that if you read any of the books from when Rudy Giuliani was mayor of New York and his, uh, 
P Chief of Police William Bratton, who came over from Boston, he recruited him from Boston, he came over there, they formulated a plan to clean up New York after liberal mayor uh, David Dinkins ran the city into the ground and nobody even wanted to take the subways. In fact, I rode the subways uh, back when it was crazy back then, and I rode the subway from a Queens. We were going on, we were going to catch a church service. I, I had a team back there doing some work with the homeless people a number of years ago. So we took the subway over to, uh, oh, Harlem. We wanted to go to a, a church over in Harlem and catch some uh, cool music and, uh, and have a great time over there. There was a church we knew about. So we jumped on the subway and in the morning, when the church service was, I had a heroin addict that was sitting next to me on the subway and he kept nodding over and just falling into my lap, leaning into me. Right. Cause he couldn't stay awake. He was, he was rushing up on, uh, on heroin. So, uh, so what Bratton and Giuliani did is they, they incorporated the theory of fixing broken windows. The concept is when you take care of the small stuff, the big stuff also gets taken care of. Like when you start take care of people that are uh, blocking traffic and pulling, stealing shopping carts and uh, urinating in public and panhandling in front of Starbucks, all of a sudden you realize that that person's wanted for robbery or they're wanted for some other crime that they never fit. They had a failure to appear on a crime. And pretty soon you're arresting these people because they've committed more serious crimes. In fact, if you notice in the appeal Democrat, which posts a lot of the crimes that happen every week, notice how many people don't have an address. They list them as homeless and they're actually committing crimes against our community. So that's what happened down here in, in uh, orange County, the orange County Sheriff's department. At first, a lot of people, no one wanted to take responsibility for dealing with this. The, the different, it's like the Santa Ana police department says, not our, not our responsibility. This department said, not our responsibility. So finally orange County sheriff's department said, you know, something we're just going to take care of business. And the agency began patrolling the homeless encampments along the Santa Ana riverbed in Anaheim, orange Santa Ana and fountain Valley. So all those police departments actually in some of those areas, the sheriff's department is the police department. So they just took care of it. And they started arresting people. Now, let me tell you what happens when you start arresting people. Folks that don't want to be arrested decide to leave the area because, or they, they fit in and they behave themselves and they go into rehab or they clean themselves up. But if they don't, and they said, listen, I don't want to be a part of you. I just want your money. I just want your food. I just want your free stuff. Free, 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 free. Those people, uh, <laughs> Walter Williams from Up From The Projects, page 128. You write, it has always been my opinion that, save for a f precious few congressmen, these people are not deserving of the honor and respect they receive. I regard most of them as enemies of both the Constitution and the moral precepts of our founding fathers. That is absolutely right. That is, uh, and, and I think that, that um, any politician who would uh, rigorously live up to his oath of office to uphold and defend the United States Constitution, uh, he, he just would not get elected uh, to office by the American people. Because what politicians reflect, they reflect the values and views of the American people, that is, those who will elect them to office. Now, some people might say, well, gee, Williams, that's, that's a little bit strong. Well, look, we just might ask ourselves, uh, <laughs> Uh, what would happen to a politician who had the vision of, let's say, James Madison, the acknowledged father of the United States Constitution? And in 1794, Congress appropriated $15,000 to help some French refugees. And James Madison stood on the floor of the House irate, and he said, and I'm virtually quoting him, he says, I cannot undertake to lay my finger on that article in the Constitution that authorizes Congress to spend the money of their constituents for the purposes of benevolence. Now, if you look at the federal budget, 
two thirds to three quarters of it is for the purposes of benevolence. Now, you say, ask yourself, what would the American people do to a politician to, or to anybody running for office who would make a statement like Madison did? Or make another statement, Madison, Madison said, also said, he said that charity is not a legitimate function of government. Now, can you imagine what the American people would do to a politician who said that? And so what I'm saying is that, is that politicians are reflecting the, the values and views of the people who elect them to office. To the Ayatollahs of Iran and every terrorist you enable, listen up. You might have met our fresh-faced flower child president and his weak-kneed Ivy League friends. You haven't met America. You haven't met the heartland where the people will defend this nation with their bloody, callous, bare hands. If that's what it takes. You haven't met the steel workers and the hard rock miners or the swamp folks in Cajun country who can wrestle a full grown gator out of the water. You haven't met the farmers, the cowboys, the loggers, and the truck drivers. You don't know the mountain men who live off the land or the brave cops who fight the good fight in the urban war zones. No, you've never met America. And you ought to pray you never do. I'm the National Rifle Association of America, and I'm freedom's safest place. All right. I heard yesterday, a lady said she, she had a relative that goes to one of the police academy courses out at Yuba and one of the instructors said I was endorsing drugs over here and I thought I wonder I thought maybe I maybe he was saying I used to do drugs but I'll be darned you know I you know I don't blame a lot of these homeless people campers and stuff I just like to lay around there's a time in my life I just like to lay around I did it but I didn't take any money for it. I didn't take any government money. I just laid around, smoked grass all day. I just stayed loaded all day, morning, noon, and night. Didn't complain, just enjoyed myself, just wanted to be left alone, didn't want to be arrested, didn't want to, I didn't care about obeying the law. I just wanted to do my own thing. I, I understand what these people want, a lot of them. And uh, I get it. I, I, can, I can understand addiction. I've used uh, painkillers before after surgery and, and thought, oh, I like those painkillers. They stop that pain, right? And I get it. But the question is, should we fund it? Should we fund people that want to stay loaded all the time or don't want to be involved, right? I think as a community, we have a lot of loving people. And it's interesting. One lady spoke at the, uh, at the meeting the other night at the, uh, sorority meeting where they gave us the money for different organizations and she'd she'd been a heroin addict and uh and she was going through a program now and she was clean and she was thinking straight and you know she said she said i think i'm going to go back to college i'm going to go to college and i want to be a drug counselor because and or i want to work uh, for people who have been victims of domestic violence i want to be trained so i can help people isn't that how it works that people that make some really bad choices in their life and get stuck in addiction or get into a bad relationship. They, they want, they have compassion on others that are in the same situation. And so this nation is full of people like that. But what we don't need is government. The least loving operation in this country is this county state and federal government. They just, they don't act out of love. They just, they're a machine. And people, people will get used to a machine just like a rat will get used to the food dropping down a chute every few minutes. They get programmed. But that's not what people need. People need to be put back to work and not beg to go back to work. They need to be taken off subsistence. It's unconstitutional to take money from me and give it to somebody else. It's just unconstitutional. And the only reason there isn't a full-blown riot by people that are hardworking people in this country is you, they haven't been pushed far enough. I think there is a, a tipping point at some point. But the government, it's interesting that conservative people will go into g politics 
and they'll just do the same socialist crap that that been going on for years and call themselves a, a conservative it's the most crazy thing i've ever seen they just go along because this the system they they make they have no ability to make a, a change in the system like walter williams was just saying before i started talking again walter williams says people will not elect folks if they take away their benefits right because people have realized in America they can tap into the government and get something for free. Isn't that something? I got a kick out of somebody the other day was talking, I think it was Ben Shapiro, or, or maybe it was someone else uh, talking about why does Puerto Rico, who has gone through a national disaster, expect the U.S. government to bail them out? Why don't they just take care of it themselves? It's a nation. Puerto Rico is a country. Why wouldn't they just take care of it themselves? And the other thing is all the, the ungratefulness, their infrastructure is so screwed up down there that a lot of the, the waste, you know, and I, I get, I ship two or three containers of humanitarian products to Cambodia every month, about 35,000 pounds per container. And people often ask me, how do you know it gets to the people that you're designating it for, in this case, orphans? And I said, because I know the people on the other end, and they know what I'm sending, and they go to the port to pick it up and pay the fees and get it out of there. So it isn't like I would know if somebody stole a container or whatever. But in Puerto Rico, it's on the news. The Puerto Rican government is, is, can't get the stuff to the people because our infrastructure is so screwed up over there. If you want to see what welfare looks like in full, when it's got on its full, full regalia, that would be Puerto Rico. That's our Greece. And so it's the same thing that happened in Hurricane Katrina. New Orleans is all on, those people down there in that part of Louisiana are all on welfare. It's a Democrat stronghold, and they just put everybody on welfare, make it really easy. So people can't, don't even have enough initiative to get out of the way of a flood. So they just sit there and blame the government and climb up on their roads or, or drowned, right? And even the mayor, remember Ray Nagan, who's now in prison for corruption? Ray Nagan left over 100 school buses that could have all hauled a load of people over to Houston and he didn't even have enough initiative to do that. Isn't that interesting? You go to a Republican or a conservative-run community, and pretty much they'll just take care of themselves in a catastrophe. But that's the difference where you create a, a, a group of people that are trained to be needy. And then when, when their needs aren't met, they blame it on mom and dad, the government. The worst thing that can happen is that the county of Sutter and the county of Yuba keep pouring money into homeless people. It's ridiculous. You know, the state of California was one of the few states in the union when they passed the TANF law, the temporary assistance instead of AFDC, where they said, we're going to give temporary assistance. You're not going to be able to get welfare forever and we were not going to create generation, generation after generation of welfare babes. We're going to make that temporary, and you're going to have to have a track of going back to work. And what happened is, remember the Democrats back then, in the early 90s, said, you know, if we do that, people are going to die. You know, the Democrats always say that. people, Anything that, any big change from their policies, people are going to die. People are going to starve and die. What happened was that, millions of people went to work they actually took jobs they got trained and they went to work and they supported their families and uh but then when california refused to put a limit on welfare so what did we get now we have one out of every three welfare recipients is in california why because they can just stay on it and there are there aren't requirements then when uh, President Barbara Obama came to town. Uh, he changed. He even watered down the requirements 
that Bill Clinton signed into effect when the Republican Congress passed welfare reform. Clinton Pat Clinton signed it, and then uh, Barack Obama watered it all down. Right. So now uh, Trump is talking about getting people off welfare and back to work. Did you see the report this week that it's the lowest number of people out of work since I think 1973? and record high in the stock market the the lowest number unemployed um, unemployed is a little deceptive because they usually only count the people that are actively looking for work and maybe on unemployment insurance so the people that have quit looking for work are not looking are not in the system and just on the handout uh they're not in those numbers, but I think the trend is still the same. Uh, I don't know whether you've noticed around you, you, et I was over in Rockland the other day. I was up there for a meeting up in a residential area where some schools are. And, um, I was amazed at the number of houses being built, not track homes, but custom homes that were being built in lots that just hadn't been filled in in the, in the neighborhoods. Uh, and, even if you look around Yuba city, all the commercial construction going on, there's a lot of construction going on in just our little part of California. There are jobs out there, but people, no one's hiring people that are using drugs and alcohol under the, that, that they're loaded all the time. Nobody's going to hire them and keep them on the job. As soon as they start missing a couple of days of work on alcohol problems, they're going to let them go. That's just the way that is. So the people of uh, f- to coddle sixty to ninety homeless people in a shelter on uh, Garden Highway and run off an entire little league operation and run off the people that are serving the community through the uh, posse, the Sutter County Sheriff's posse, where they have the arena there, and to run off two two shooting ranges. It's just the ultimate in stupidity. I think I think the supervisors have lost their mind, and if the sheriff does not want to arrest people that are violating law, maybe he should resign and let somebody else take it until the new election. There's going to be an election, and we'll get a new sheriff in January 2018. But maybe we need to have an earlier change just to, to have an impact if we can have a sheriff that will actually start arresting people. Now I notice somebody's arresting folks, but they have to actually go out and commit an egregious crime, like steal something or knock somebody over or something. Anyway, it's interesting when the, the leader of the hand of hope is open in talking about the fact that many of the homeless, I watch the homeless in front of my house, which is near 14 sideways down by the rescue mission. I don't recognize these people. I don't recognize them have been in and out of the Yuba County jail. They're new people to this community. And the question is what's drawing them here. And when you provide enough services, as Walter Williams says, you will subsidize a big homeless industry here that Scott Thurman with Thurman consulting. He's like uh, the homeless industry pimp. Uh, he is thrilled about that because it's, he just sees dollar signs every time we got a flood. It, he, it just the bigger the problem, the bigger his check. It could be solved overnight, people, if we just it's all public policy and we're just we're feeding the bears is what we're feeding. Uh, all right, I want to mention also regarding sb 54 that's the law that creates california as a sanctuary state it's been passed it's been signed into law and now it will force local law enforcement uh it's trying to force local law enforcement to uh not comply with federal immigration authorities so when law enforcement comes into contact with a person and begins asking them for their identification etc they're not supposed to get into their immigration status. In other words, it doesn't matter what country they're from. It's none of their business. So uh, you heard earlier uh, one of the folks, was that Chris, maybe Chris Ann Hall or one of them, talk about that 
the the highest authority in the land is not the government it's the constitution so when the government starts to color outside of the lines of the constitution we have a right to say hell no if you want to read my article about it you can read it in the territorial dispatch you can go online at territorialdispatch.biz and you can read it. it's on the front page just say hell no or something like that it's a title but that but it's an article that talks about john d'agostini who is the sheriff of el dorado county uh d'agostini has has had the reputation of taking his job seriously his constitutional mandate to protect his constituents seriously and that is that includes telling the the federal government and the state government to go to hell and butt out of our business when you want to go against the constitution so what happened was a couple of years ago is they have national forests in el dorado county one is the tahoe national forest and so D'Augustini's constituents were complaining to him because when they went to spend time in the national forest which every taxpayer is a part owner the forest officials were harassing them and telling them they couldn't be here they couldn't be there they couldn't have a gun they couldn't pack a weapon da 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 and they would cite them so after about 50 complaints d'agostini just said to the forest service i'm removing your police powers if you want to like you know manage or herd chipmunks have a happy or if you want to you know watch the fish have a happy but leave el dorado county citizens alone you're in our county we're not in yours right just just because the el dorado the fo- national force happens to be in el dorado county that doesn't mean you you are god of el dorado county no we're we're running el, el dorado county if you don't like it how we do business how we roll here in el dorado county get out and so he removed the policing privileges of the forest service guys and just said hey hug some trees do whatever obama told you to do but don't fuss with el dorado people the second thing he did when the obama administration said well we're just going to make our own gun laws forget congress which was typical of obama's people we'll just have all these epa directors and stuff we'll make up our own rules so d'agostini's wrote a letter to vice president biden and just said do what you want but we're following the constitution and that wouldn't be following your stupid liberal gun laws right the third thing he's done is after sb 54 was signed by these perverts down here in sacramento by the way, have you noticed that once the Harvey Weinstein thing, do you remember all the Democrats, the liberals accusing conservatives or Republicans of a war on women? I don't know. I don't know how much worse a war gets when you start raping the women in your around your, you know, that work with you, raping them, molesting them, right? Uh, and abusing them. Let's talk about mental abuse where you hold such power over their income making ability that they're afraid to go to the police, right? You ever heard of witness intimidation or victim intimidation? That's another crime that the DA can arrest you over. These people in Hollywood were so intimidated, these females that they let the guy rape them and they let not only him, but other people. And now it's like, it's like everybody's coming out of the closet being a, they're accusing everybody uh people in the media people in congress of molesting them it's like is anybody out there not molesting anybody right it's like who's left so far the big kahuna out here hasn't been accused i haven't been accused wiki man hasn't been accused out here we're in the media but now all the media guys are getting accused hollywood guys the head of amazon.com one of the top guys there got it's amazing and uh so it's all this war on women but then then all of a sudden uh 
they're the ones actually doing the very things they're accusing conservatives of doing. Interesting. So now we have these perverts down in California in, in the, the legislature. And, uh, and so they're telling uh, sheriffs what they got to do. And the thing is, they haven't read the Constitution. And that the sheriffs have the right to, uh, they have authority if, if whatever the state and federal government is not lawful, according to the Constitution, you can make all the laws you want, but if it violates the Constitution, according to the sheriff, he just says, thank you, but no. Thank you, but no, I'm not going to do that. And so just go on about your business. So uh, the state of Jefferson leadership is, uh, they sent out a news release supporting the, there's a sheriff's association that are is the sheriff's association and the uh, California Sheriff's Association, National Sheriff's Association, and uh, they're saying, hey, pass legislation that doesn't hamstring sheriffs. And they're, the state of Jefferson is saying, get it on sheriffs. Let's take control and authority over our counties. You have rightful, the rightful status legally. In fact, uh, a professor at McGeorge Law School was asked by one media person that was doing an article on this topic, do these sheriffs have the right to tell everybody to, like, step down, stand down? And the guy says, yeah, they do. So you ought to – maybe that will increase your level of appreciation and respect for the sheriff of the county, and, and maybe you might be careful on who you're going to vote for and you might want to ask them, how do they feel about telling the federal government and state to go thumb their nose? If they don't feel like they can do that, maybe you shouldn't vote for them. So we're, we're going to elect two sheriffs, one in Yuba, one in Sutter. I can't speak for Placer, Butte, Nevada, Calusa, right, all you folks. Uh, but we're going to get two new sheriffs because the two current sheriffs are retiring. We're going to get two fresh sheriffs starting January 1, 2018. And I think they're going to be faced with some of this stupid because we're, we're going to not, we're going to end up with another, it sounds like another liberal governor after Brown, and we're going to have one fight after another. And at some point, uh, it may help the state of Jefferson counties to just separate and part ways with the state. What we can do right now is before we have a separate state called Jefferson or whatever we're going to call it, uh, is we can start acting according to the Constitution. Obey the Constitution, nothing else. Just say we're not going to follow that. All right? So that's that. Check that out. You can see that article. I also wrote an article about binge spending in Sutter County. That's in the Territorial Dispatch. I don't know whether there's many papers left out there to pick up from, but you can get it online, read the whole paper, all the ads, page by page, not like the Appeal Democrat that's always always a goofy trap to get into that website. But territorialdispatch.biz. Uh, I think we're about ready to take a break, and uh, we got one more hour to go after this, so just a couple minutes, we'll be right back. Four sanctuary cities mandated to cooperate with federal immigration enforcement efforts say they will not do so. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio and Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney informed DOJ today they have no intention of providing information by Sunday's imposed deadline to prove they are not impeding federal immigration enforcement. Justice has threatened both cities with a cutoff of millions in federal grants. Officials with U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, say the enforcement posture of sanctuary cities is indeed endangering citizens in those communities. Fox James Rosen, Attorney General Jeff Sessions among those, saying cities that are not helping with immigration law are endangering public safety. About 150 people on motorbikes and in cars holding a rally through the streets of Barcelona waving Spanish and official Catalan flags. Now those demonstrators honking horns to show their solidarity with Spain's national police and opposition to a declaration of independence by Catalonia. That motorized demonstration coming a day after Catalan lawmakers voted 
in favor of a declaration of independence from Spain. Saturday Night Live brings back a unique character for Halloween. He's back. How's it hanging? I'm David Pumpkin. The Saturday Night Live sketch featuring a character played by Tom Hanks that went viral last Halloween returns. Any questions? Who? The sketch with Hanks as a pumpkin-suited David returns as a half-hour animated special. Is this like a known thing? Just listen to my song! Indeed. Set in a small suburban town, a mysterious elevator riding Mr. Pumpkins and his bony sidekicks show a young boy and his sister the true meaning of Halloween, airing in place of this week's Saturday Night Live with a one-hour best-of following. Michelle Polino, Fox News. And it's World Series Game 4 tonight in Houston. The Astros hold a two-games-to-one lead over the Los Angeles Dodgers. I'm Paul Stevens, Fox News Radio. This week, Donald Trump released his new tax plan, which was immediately shot down by his political opponents on the left. But what would those same people think if they were told that that tax plan was actually Bernie Sanders' plan? Today, we're at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. to find out. What were your thoughts on Trump's tax plan when you saw it? Um, it's very, it's better for the upper class than anyone else. Pretty much a uh, horrible for the middle class, especially the lower class. I mean, not ideal. It's probably not the most efficient nor beneficial to the general populace. Pretty negative. <laughs> I feel the same. Yeah, yeah. So Bernie Sanders came out with his plan. Some people call it the compassionate alternative. So we're getting opinions on Bernie's plan. First, one of Bernie Sanders' plans is to enhance the child tax credit, which is tax money given back to families when they have children. What do you think of that? Positive or negative? Positive. All right. Same. I was a social worker, so I understand how important tax credits like that are. Parents that go, have children go through a lot, and I think giving back money to them really in turn helps the children. I think that's great. I think that's positive, definitely. Okay. Positive, definitely. Next up, uh, eliminating the death tax. So when people die, it's a large tax on their estate that goes to their family. What do you think of that? I think that's definitely something that we should be doing. I do think that's a good idea because I'm from New Jersey and we used to have like a really heavy inheritance tax. I'm in favor of that. I would say more positive. I think I agree with that. Bernie is planning to lower the small business tax rate to a maximum of 25%. I think that's a positive or negative? Um, I definitely think that's a positive. I feel very positively toward that. My family has a small business, so I would definitely think that's a positive thing. Taxing them less makes more sense. Any way we can help small businesses work and like thrive, it's definitely something that's beneficial for the country. I think that would be great. Overall, main idea of the plan, what do you think? Bernie did a good job, bad job? I think overall, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good job. All good right. job, Bernie. I think it's a definitely a good plan, a positive plan that can help everyone. I think it's pretty good. Like, uh, definitely better than whatever Trump is proposing. I would make that leap right there. So, What if I told you this actually is Donald Trump's tax plan, not Bernie's? You got me. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, it's Trump's plan. Hello, darkness, my old friend. All of these are actually Trump's ideas. This is actually Trump's plan. What? Wow. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. That, wow. I am shocked that I do agree with Trump on certain things. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Interesting. I'm definitely happily surprised that it like, sounds a lot better than I would have expected it to. I would have imagined he would be a little more stupid than that. Okay. So, but it's not a stupid plan? No, I don't think so. But I think if you said it was Trump, at least for many people it would be more opposition to it just because it was Trump. It could be a policy of giving me ice cream, but if it's Trump, I'd be like, what's in that ice cream? I definitely think there's an initial bias. I mean, I've done it myself. Like, I'll just like, hear the word Trump and I'll be like, ugh. Um, I definitely think that's something to like need to be like looked over. People, once they hear Trump or like Republican, they become like, oh, they suck no matter what. I think people definitely hear the name and start to think things automatically. And also because a lot of people just go to the same news sources, the same media, it makes it tough to get other points of view. All right, welcome back. You're listening to Live with Lou. Uh, we're plowing ahead here. We're two hours into a three-hour show ending here at noon. This is the Patriot KMYC 1410. I wanted to mention a couple of things I did earlier. I want to give a shout-out to the Sutter Buttes Tea Party Patriots. They have a Their next meeting is coming up on November 6th. And uh, Nathan Black, who is the uh, auditor controller for Sutter County, and some of you that are probably in these other counties might want to go sit in on this. Uh, they're going to talk about CalPERS pensions, which eventually will break the budget of every county, every city, every agency. 
Uh, and before it gets to breaking the budget where you think, oh, I don't know, you know, it hasn't broke the budget yet. What you're going to experience is what I call services or service insolvency. Insolvency means you're unable to, to have it or pay for it. That means that <clears throat> what you used to remember on government services, street sweeping, park maintenance, upgrades on lights, paving, all that kind of stuff, just doesn't get done anymore because you can't afford to because all the money is going into government huge salaries, which are the biggest salaries in the community now. If you notice, look, look on Transparent California, look up your county, and just begin. They'll start right at the biggest salaries. You'll notice salaries three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, depending on what kind of operations you have in your county. And you'll have thousand people in some of these bigger counties making a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars a year, or more. I want you to think about that. Call it public service, not really. So. Anyway, we have, we have a real situation where we have services and solvency. And so Nate Black is going to be talking about, on November 6th, CalPERS pension. He's also going to be talking about this homeless plan, which they've never really discussed how much it's going to cost on an ongoing basis as a part of the budget to take care of a hundred or 200 people. There's over about, I think 97,000 people in Sutter County in the two counties. There's probably 167,000 people. And we're, we're now going to create a whole nother level of welfare system for a few hundred people that don't want to take advantage of the system. Either they're taking advantage of it, but don't want to make any changes. They want to just get welfare or general assistance or section eight or free, 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 free forever. And they, we owe it to them. So they want to do whatever they want, live however they want, behave however they want, steal shopping carts, walk off with everything, right? Are we going to do that? Or are we going to make, make some different changes? Nate Black will be at the Tea Party meeting on November 6th talking about those issues. And people ought to be there talking about the Constitution. I know they've had Chris Ann Hall at the Tea Party where she's talked about that a lot of what government does has nothing to do with the Constitution. They've totally taken over large areas of our, our community's responsibility. So check that out. Also, uh, I, I just sold 15. I got a couple calls uh, waiting, uh, after we get off the air to buy some tickets, I just sold 15. Uh, so we still have some tickets to sell. If you want to buy these tickets and Andy Vasquez is in there, he said, Lou, that's a good gun. Uh, he said, I want one for my wife. He said, I want to win that for my wife and I'm going to trade her out of her 38. I th think that's what he said. And he said, this is a little better, bigger gun. Smith and Wesson M and P shield nine millimeter plus three magazines. And if you buy a ticket and you win or you don't win, the ticket is good for one hour of shooting at the Shooter's Paradise on Calusa Avenue in Yuba City. So you think, oh, I bought that ticket. I didn't win anything. Yeah, you're going to win just by buying it. You're going to get an hour of range time. I don't know what range time normally costs, but whatever it costs, at least the ticket's worth something, right? Just getting the ticket only selling 300 of them. So you've got a, a great chance to win a lot better than w working with the state of California lottery. So you can just dial me up at seven, one, three, one, eight, three, eight. And, um, you can, uh, get it on. We, I think we've raised over $20,000, uh, from ver from various sources. Uh, the Stevens farmhouse pie people, the, uh, Jeff and Cherie Stevens out there on 99, they did a pie auction and raised us over $2,000. And then the Sigma Alpha Iota sisters uh, gave us $1,000. And other people, uh, by County Ambulance helped us with $2,500. Right out Hospital, $5,000. Uh, 
So if you want to help us, we, we will gladly take your money and spend it very wisely. We're tight fisted on how we spend money and tip training citizens to help citizens in time of crisis. So you can connect with us at box six, four, five Marysville, six, four, five Marysville, nine, five, nine, oh, one tip. Just sit, make your check to tip. It's tax deductible. Or you can go online at youcaring.com backslash tip and it's self-explanatory there or you could go on our website if you want to become a volunteer you could sign up and we'll we'll give you some information at yuba sutter tip one word dot org and you can give through that uh website or you could say hey give me more information about tip and and we will help you so anyway uh at, at the break uh they were talking about Trump's tax plan. And when Trump's tax plan is presented as Bernie Sanders tax plan, all the students love it. Does that, is that a scary thought right there about our students? Call these are college students. Oh, just putting Ber Bernie's name on it. They were willing to do it. But when you put Trump's name on it, they, they got an upset stomach. So I wanted to, uh, talk about this because every time that the conservative element in society wants to reduce taxes. Do you remember when Reagan reduced, we had, when Ronald Reagan took over the presidency, we had tax brackets up at the 70 percentile. In other words, you started off, if you made like $20,000 a year or, or 10,000, you had a little tiny bit of tax, but then as you went into higher increments of income, you got taxed more on that top income. And so the highest level, if you made gajillions of dollars, you got taxed at 70% on that top level or uh, quintile, they call it quintiles or they're the brackets. I call them brackets. That top bracket was before Reagan took over, it was 70%. What he did is drastically cut income taxes. And of course the Democrats always say we're all going to die when that happens. What happened was that the revenue into the federal government actually increased uh, because people did more and more business and the more and more business you do, the more and more taxes you generate, et cetera, et cetera. So taxes, the revenue coming into federal government increased, even though we cut taxes by about one half on the top income brackets. So now we have uh, the, the leading people like Mick Mulvaney, who is in charge of the uh, budget management in the in the uh, the U.S. economy, <clears throat> he began discussing how they want to cut taxes. And so the common refrain from the Democrats is, "Well, you're just you always going to cut taxes on the rich. That's all the Republican wants to do: cut taxes on the rich. What about the poor? Well, here's the deal, folks." And, and you people, it, if you're really honest, I hope you get this. Poor people don't pay income taxes. And people that are at the lower echelon of society above the poor that are working some, they don't pay income taxes. In fact, people on welfare don't pay income taxes. So if you're going to cut income tax, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes liberals want to give money, give more money to the poor, even though they don't pay any income taxes. Like that's why you get, see things like the child tax credit. People that don't pay any income tra taxes can file on that and get money back, even though they didn't pay any money in Isn't that interesting. It's kind of like being able to go to the bank and though you are overdrawn, They'll give you more money. Is that crazy? They won't do that. But in the government, people think you should. I'm just worthy of money to come from the government, even though I didn't pay any into the government, right? So <clears throat> what what becomes clear here, if you're a, a, a sober thinking person, is that the top 20% of income earners in the, in the U S pay 95% of income taxes. Now we all pay taxes like in California. If we pay, if we purchase something, we pay taxes on it, right? It's a sales tax. 
there's lots of different types of taxes. But in income tax, the top 20% of earners pay 95% of your income tax. The middle class, that's in a, in a different quintile, they call it, or a different bracket is what I call it. They pay down to the single digits. Single digits for you and all of us is like before you get to 10, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 percent. So what this article by Paul Bedard, of the, who is a liberal, says, any tax cut for middle income earners will also provide a benefit for those further up the income scale. In other words, our tax, because we have a progressive tax system, is we have brackets or quintiles, they call them. So the first taxable amount is at certain a certain per, uh, amount of money, and they take a very small percentage that they tax you on that. Then you get up the next bracket, that amount of money in that bracket is a higher percentage. Then you get a higher percentage and a higher, the higher you go up, that chunk of money gets taxed at a higher amount. So he says, any tax cut for middle income earners will also provide a benefit for those further up the income scale, including the top 20%. Now, why would anybody say you make a hundred million dollars a year and you pay lots of taxes? Why would you quibble about giving those people a tax break? You would only be, if you're bitching about that, that just means you're jealous. Why, why, why couldn't, why, what's wrong with people keeping as much of their own money, whether it's $5 or 500 million as they earn, if they want, if they earn it and they're smart or they're hardworking or however they, it doesn't make any difference. Just focus on your own gig. If you only make $5, you don't pay any tax. Be happy, right? Don't worry. Be happy. We have a very complicated tax system and it should be changed. But the, the, the people, the Republicans and the Democrats, the swamp people, Ryan McConnell, all these people in the Republic, they don't want to change it. Uh, McCain flake. Corker, they're all swamp people. They, they're no different than the Democrats. They just want to keep their benefits. They want to keep molesting women. They want to keep touching these young teenage girls that work for them and teenage boys, depending on what persuasion they are. And uh, they just want same o same o. They want their $50 haircuts provided by the barbershop so they don't, have even, they don't even have to leave the office building. They just go down there and... and and they get their hair cut for free. So, uh, so Mulvaney says Mick Mulvaney, who is the head of the budget operations says, if you break the income tax universe into what we call quintiles, so equal size, 20% columns. In other words, there's 20% brackets. The first two columns, the first quintile and the lower quintile don't pay any taxes at all. In fact, uh, it, it, you got to get to the middle quintile before you start paying. So he said the middle quintile, which some people describe as the middle class pays an effective rate in the lower single digits, lower single digits is far below 10% of their taxable income. That's after the deductions, standard deductions, itemized deductions and all that. And all the taxes are paid by folks in the top two quintiles. And that glass quintile pays almost fully 95% of all the taxes we collect at the federal government of income tax. He says, people always ask all the time, why do we want to give a tax cut to the rich? So he explains the math. He says, we have a progressive tax system, which means that if you make 1 million and I make 50,000, we both pay the exact same rate on the first quintile. Let's say hypothetically the first 20,000. And then from the next 20,000 to my 50,000, we pay the same there as well. But once the really rich person that makes a million they start paying higher amounts as they go up the quintiles, right? Get it? 
So quit whining. If you don't make a lot of money, why try to stab the tires of the guy or gal that's making a lot more money? Wish them well. I'm happy. The people I know that make tons of money, I think God bless you. You did good. I'm happy for you. Spend your money as you will. It's your life, right? Do as you want. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. You get it? Be kind and quit doing this stupid liberal thing like, oh, they're just helping the rich. If the rich, if you never pay any taxes, why would, and, and life is good if, so, if you liked what you're doing, why blame the rich? They're not keeping you down. If you want to make some more money, go, go take a second job. Go, go back to school. Do something else. Do, you know, come up with a great idea. But why blame the rich if they're, if they're paying for your sewage to be handled, your streets to be paved, the military to protect you, right? Why complain about that? Get over it. So the other article I read this week, which is, I thought was totally cool. It was sent to me by one of the guys that runs uh, the Sutter County airport operation. It, it's just like they could have put Sutter County's name in here. It says the FAA, the federal aviation administration told the city of Tehachapi, uh, that the special treatment they were giving to people that are on airport property must stop. And as I read it, I thought I could have just put the county of Sutter, wherever they put the city of Tehachapi, because they have been violating the rules, the regulations to have an airport. They said, oh, we want to have an airport. Oh, yeah, sure, we'll obey all the rules. Then when they had the airport for decades, the supervisors have not been doing right. So here's how an airport works. So basically the federal aviation administration went into the city of Tehachapi airport, did an audit and they said, wait a minute, you can't have that hangar over there and, and not charge fair market value to the city to have their own airplane over there. And you can't have that baseball field down there and you can't have that shooting range and you can't like, I'll, I'll explain to you all the stuff. Here's the stuff they have on their airport. They have a municipal, uh, they have sewage ponds on, on their airport, out in the airport property surrounding their strip, their landing strip. They have an industrial center. They have uh, a rodeo. They got a rodeo area out there. They have uh, rent-free use of two hangars and city rent-free use of land on which it stores vehicles. They got the Kern County Transit rent-free use of bus parking lot. They got the Kern County Red Cross rent-free use of trailer storage. They got 10 billboards out there. They got a cell tower. None of that, all that was going on without the permission of the Federal Aviation Administration. FAA says you can have other stuff that's unrelated to the airport around the airport, but you have to get our permission and you have to show us a plot plan and you have to charge fair rental value to all those uses, even though you kind of like them. And that money must go into the operation of the airport. So what Tehachapi, the city of Tehachapi did, and what the county of Sutter did, they did the same thing. They thought, oh, we love those guys. We like the Red Cross. Oh, we love the transit system. Oh, we love the rodeo. So we're going to give you $1 a year rent or something like that, right? And they didn't charge them fair market value rent. And even the, the county operations, like we have the Sutter County Welfare is sitting on the airport, but they haven't been paying any rent. So what happens is the same thing happened in Tehachapi happened in Sutter County. The airport went broke because nobody was paying their fair share. And so the, the county actually owes the airport in Sutter County hundreds of thousands of dollars and hasn't been paid yet. Same way in Tehachapi. So uh, no wonder Scott Mitnick wants to get rid of the airport, right? He wants to get out from under that debt. We'll be right back. And uh, we got 30 minutes left, so they tell me. Bringing new meaning to the term first responders. Fellow community members stepping forward, volunteering their time to help others faced with what might be some of the most traumatic incidents in their lives. 
It's called the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP. It's been used in communities across the United States for years, and its volunteers have been dispatched to provide what they call emotional first aid. A collaboration between police, paramedics, fire departments, and even hospital staff is making sure residents are emotionally taken care of in a time of crisis. Residents are volunteering their time with the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP, dispatched to the scene of a fire, accident, or death to focus on the emotional needs of those left behind. It's just being there and being comforting, like a good friend or an extension of your family. Ready to assist, sit and listen to community members in a time of tragedy. To learn more about the Trauma Intervention Program, visit yubasuttertip.org or call 673-9300. Check out the Territorial Dispatch papers a weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscription. It's only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic, and weather information along with a calendar of local events. Visit the E-Territorial at at eterritorial.com. I'll say this plainly, I've said it before, taxation is theft. It presumes that the government has a higher claim on our property than we do. And now a special address from the President of the United States on global warming. Hello America, it's me, your, your President, your Commander-in-Chief of the world. And I'm here at my, my ranch here in Crawford, Texas, just just taking a little R&R, &R, you know, relaxing, growing out my soul patch, playing a little frisbee golf with Condi Rice and Dick Cheney, having a good time, but, but still keeping my eye on the ball. And there's an issue that has come to my attention, the issue of the so-called global warmings that are happening on our, our planet. For centuries, the rays of the sun have warmed the surface of our Earth's crust, and uh, apparently those rays are, are intensifying in such a way that uh, it's increasing lava flows. <laughs> and, uh, cut. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> Global warming is an issue that my administration is, is very concerned about, deeply. Deeply in a deep kind of concerned way. It's, uh, I don't, I start my day and I think about the warming of the globe and how we can get it warmer. Cut. Rest assured that the issue of global warming is something that my administration takes very seriously. The, not right now, Condi. Cut. Get, we'll play later. I'm sure by now you've all heard what liberal scientists are trying to say. It seems that, uh, that liberals and, and godless tax raisers are, tr are trying to make me look bad by using such things as facts and scientific data. Cut. What? Mr. President, you can't say they're using facts. Right. Facts are real. They're not disputed. How do you know that? <laughs> what kind of book is this? Jeez. Why do you tell me it was a pop-up book? Those things scare the crap out of me. I don't think that's the kind of science book we're looking for. We're talking about global you, Well, warming. what kind of science book would you suggest? Well, there's, there's a lot of books. One there. filled with facts, maybe? Yes. Yeah. I bet you'd like that. When you think back to biblical times, when Adam and Eve talked to that snake 6,000 years ago, when the world was created, it was hot back then, too. Why do you think Adam and Eve were naked? You see what I'm saying? I mean... I'm not making this stuff up. You know, you didn't, you didn't hear Adam and Eve running around talking about emission standards or hybrid cars. In fact, Adam and Eve drove an excursion. Cut. Let's talk about something that's, that really matters, like keeping steroids out of T-ball. Cut. I think the polar ice caps suck. Who cares about having a place where a bunch of penguins can have an orgy? Cut. Global warming, don't worry about it. we we got a beat on this thing. We're going to, you know, we just need to get nature to cooperate with us. We don't need to listen to nature. Nature needs to listen to us. Cut. Mr. 
Mr. President, you asked, to, asked me to tell you when the Rangers game's on. It's oh, on right now. What inning is it? Better not be past the third inning. We now return to your regularly scheduled program. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening today. We're, uh, we're kind of getting ready to land the plane here. We get about 20 minutes or so to finish. <clears throat> and then there's a sports talk show comes on uh, if you want to hang around for that. But uh, if you missed part of the show today and you want to catch up on it, you can go to One Eye Blind Media. Spell that all out. One Eye Blind Media on YouTube. And uh, when you get to that channel, you can look up uh, playlists on One Eye Blind Media and you can pick Live with Lou and pick the show you want. Today's show, the 28th. And uh, you can catch that. I think they'll probably post it. I think they're last few weeks they've been getting it up by Sunday evening, but if not Sunday evening, Monday. And you can listen it at your convenience. Um, so <clears throat> this last probably year and a half, uh, there was a race, California Senate race in uh, Orange County and the Fullerton area, representing the Fullerton area. And normally that's a kind of a – Orange County typically has been a, a conservative stronghold. Typically you would see Republicans win down there, but it's been changing. As demographics change, people move in and out of an area. And so it was a very, very close race. In fact, I think they may even contested it in court. It was just a 1,000, 2,000 votes separating these candidates. And the, the Democrat won the, the, uh, the race. His name is Josh Newman. And uh, so people were disappointed that were conservative, of course, because it had been a long, uh, long time represented by conservatives. But they hoped that Newman would be a conservative Democrat and would respect uh, their wishes, being that, that it was such a close, basically, as a 50-50 split on the election. However, uh, Josh Newman, as he got in there, he was the deciding vote to give us our new gas tax. And that gas tax, I think, is going to come into play on uh, November 1. And so people were so infuriated with Josh Newman. He's a, not, you know, he's a rookie senator. So they began to have a recall of Newman, and they began to get signatures. And the Democrats panicked, and they began changing the rules since – they have a super majority of Democrats in the legislature, so they can create any rule they want. And they tried they tried to go before judges. They tried to change rules, and they actually changed one rule because they said the Republicans, the people involved in the recall, was were suggesting that if they recalled Newman, they would actually recall the tax, which wasn't the case. Recall, recalling Newman would just change the balance and it would actually, I think, eliminate the supermajority in the Congress, in the, um, the Senate. So, but they prevailed in saying, hey, we, we insist, they passed a law saying because we feel that it was misrepresented, the recall, that people should have a chance to rescind their, take back their signature. So they got that passed. So the, uh, the opponents of the recall, the Democrats needed to get more than 7,000 voters to that signed the recall to take back their signature saying, I made a mistake. I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, but they failed. And they only got a few hundred people decided to, I think, 849 or something like that, instead of several thousand, actually said, oh, I'm going to, I changed my mind. So the recall uh, is going to go forward, and Josh Newman will, uh, will, it will be on the ballot, do you want or do you not want to recall jo Senator Josh Newman? And so... 
along usually the way recalls work is along with that question are candidates that are listed there that would like to take Josh Newman's spot should the vote go against Newman. And so it looks like that's going to happen. And in, and when that happens, there may be able to be a recall of the gas tax. Uh, so, and I just saw, I think it was a note or an item on Facebook from assemblyman James Gallagher indicating that virtually no, none of the money on the gas tax, or there's also besides the gas tax, what I thought was really painful was a new annual vehicle fee. So your vehicle fees are going up a lot. Uh, so it's interesting in some states, I had a lady that told me that was used to live here and she was coming back to town to take care of some family business. And she called the trauma intervention line for some help. And she said she'd been down in Texas where the vehicle fee is like 15 or $25. That's all it is. It's just an amazing thing. And here we pay hundreds of dollars or maybe more than a thousand dollars on some cars per year. It's just unbelievable. So, uh, if they recall Josh Newman down there, you're not going to get a vote on it up here, but you can contribute to the cause. So uh, a successful recall would deprive the Democrats of a supermajority in the Senate. A supermajority in the Senate basically means that whatever the Democrats want to do to us, they can without any if, – if all of the Republicans oppose it, it doesn't make a difference. It will not – change the outcome so um, my suggestion to you is as you hear about <clears throat> this Josh Newman recall you might want to get behind the organization that because they still have to vote vote him out <clears throat> they just have now got permission to get it on the ballot so to vote him out uh, even though you're from Yuba Sutter or one of these northern counties, it could benefit you or probably will benefit you because we're eliminating a super majority even if we don't if, even if we're not able to get out of this gas tax. <clears throat> now the interesting thing about the gas tax is and the new vehicle fee is I can't is it Gary Kahn, C O H N, who is one of the top guys in the administration. He's a former Goldman Sachs guy. He's got a chrome dome, shaved head. I think it's Gary Kahn, C-O-H-N. He has actually proposed, which really incensed me, a federal gas, another federal gas tax, raising the federal gas taxes, which we pay in California. We pay a federal gas tax, and we pay a number of state gas taxes. Plus, in the city of Marysville, you pay an extra 1% sales tax on your on the sale at the gas station if you buy gas in Marysville so if you just drive across the river to Yuba City or to Linda you can get much cheaper gas there than you can in Marysville my point here is it would be worth donating some money even if you only donated 10 or 20 dollars to this effort to recall uh, Josh Newman and uh, it doesn't make any difference on other other conservatives that get elected down there. I mean, you could donate to them as well if you knew who you're voting for, who you're contributing to, but you may not, not being from down there. But at least you know that this Josh Newman is bad news. And a recall of him would trigger one of these other people, whoever they, whoever decides to run. In fact, I think there, there, it's an Asian person, uh, I think they're Chinese that ran and lost against them. I think it's a female that used to be, maybe used to have this office. So she may run again and hopefully get the, get the, the uh, spot back because it was such a very, very close race. So uh, think about that. Just hold Josh Newman <clears throat> of Fullerton, California, and it's in Orange County. 
But the only people that can vote in that are in his district, the Senate district down there. But the districts down there are small but heavily populated versus us. <clears throat> Our districts up here are large but sparsely populated. The final thing I want to talk about today <clears throat> is an interesting thing that has gone on during the Bush and then heavily in the Obama years. And it's a scheme to get around. You know, we've always thought of the Congress as sort of protecting us, the Senate and the Assembly, or the Senate and the House of Representatives at the federal level, that you think, oh, people propose a lot of stuff, but in the end, my representative has to vote for or against it, and they got to get a majority to vote for it. So that's a big task. It's a lot easier for the president to make arbitrary decisions and violate the Constitution and then give executive privileges to department heads, like of the EPA, et cetera. And so what's happened here is there's been this concept called sue and settle, S-U-E and settle. In other words, file a lawsuit against the government and settle. And liberals, liberal government employees and bureaucrats and politicians have encouraged people like the Sierra Club uh, and various environmental groups. They've encouraged them to instead of taking issues to their congressmen or senators, they just simply sue the government, and then the agency called the Environmental Protection Agency would negotiate because they actually want the same thing as these liberal environmentalists want. I'm talking about extreme environmentalism here, not just having clean water, but wanting to control where you can go on public lands, etc. And so they would sue the government, and the government would actually be, they wouldn't be adversarial. They would be on the same side, side. These liberal bureaucrats would be on the same side of these plaintiffs or those that were filing the suit, and they would, they would settle with them and give your money and my money, the, our tax money, to these environmentalists, uh, and then they would change the rules to comply with the judge's ruling. So it says here, a practice known as sue and settle used by the Environmental Protection Agency to enact controversial regulations, listen to this, cost taxpayers $68 billion since 2005. Now, that's sent, that was during the Bush administration and has an annual cost of $26 more billion, according to a new report. So um, Scott Pruitt, the current EPA administrator and former attorney that used to sue the EPA uh, on behalf of people the EPA was abusing, he has ended sue and settle. He, they killed that whole operation. You cannot just sue and settle anymore. The other thing that it did besides costing taxpayers 68 billion since 2005 and an annual cost of 26 billion it caused businesses millions of hours of red tape businesses and industries so i'll give you an example of something really stupid my friend uh danny patigian runs a a big trucking firm out of fresno california and they're a California trucking firm. That means they don't go to Oregon or Nevada. They just stay in California, go back and forth and back and forth, moving freight. So at their trucking yard, they have trailers and they have tractors that pull the trailers. And then when trailers get worn out, they take them apart. They part them out or they'll use them and take parts off one to replace parts at another. Say if you have a car crash or the trailer gets damaged, they'll borrow parts. And that, so they have like a, a yard where they part out these trailers. And ultimately, when they get parted out enough, they disassemble the entire trailer and separate all the metal, and they recycle the metal. Sounds good so far, right? So the way they, when they take the trailers apart and separate all the products, they put them in large bins. They're outdoors. So they can have the different types of metal, whether it's steel or aluminum or whatever, so they can then haul it to the recyclers. 
or have the recyclers pick it up. So the EPA people come in and say, you can't have those bins of metal parts sitting out in the open where the rain would fall on them and then the rain would run off them and it might take it may take some residue off them and end up in the soil now what would you say if that was your business and they were saying that what would be your logical answer it might be well when all those parts were attached to one another and it rained on them that same rain and those same parts if there was any residue to be had ran off into the soil and then the little nerd pea brain guy that actually doesn't do anything for society except be a leech to it said to Danny my friend well yeah I know but when we're but it's illegal to have the separate when you take the trailer apart you can't have them sitting out in the open so I think Danny ran him off the property now this is the type of craziness that's happened during I don't know whether you remember George Bush he was not a conservative and he actually we played that comedic clip of global warming with George Bush but honestly that's that was about how stupid that guy is on global warming but he kind of endorsed global warming and and allowed this sue and settle baloney to go on and in Obama he he supersized it so Pruitt ended the practice this last week and I just think thank you Jesus it says he said during the Bush and Obama years it was used by government activists these are government activists people that were paying with our tax dollars and they work for the government but they're actually activists and they're inclu inclu uh, encouraging private groups to sue them because so, they want to give them money, but they got to do the lawsuit and then they'll settle out of court. What a scam, huh? It was used by government acti activists and outside influence groups to force through new and costly regulations without the normal transparency required when rules are properly developed. Uh, it was a boon for you out in all of us. That means you scored a big pile of cash to lawyers and, and a financial disaster for the citizens. This is the swamp, people. This is the swamp. And uh, this is where government bureaucrats run roughshod over your lives, over your business, threaten you with lawsuits, take your money, it's like the guy up in Tehama County, that farmer, we played the clip about uh, two months ago, ended up paying, and he still ended up paying it under the Trump administration. Now, I don't know whether he can get the money back or not. They fined him tens of millions of dollars for plowing up a field to plant weed in it. It was just a field. It was not a wetland, but they called it a wetland because you know how when you see a fallow field and it's got little grooves in it small grooves maybe three or four inches and water would actually catch in it and then percolate in the ground they called that a wetland and so they find this poor soul that has been a farmer for years they find him millions and millions of dollars he paid some of it and i thought man can't trump just like wave his wand and give tell this guy hey uh we ain't gonna bug you we ain't gonna bug you anymore uh, so anyway, when you think, was it worth, maybe you think, well, Trump isn't doing all I hope for. I'll tell you, there's some huge things going on that aren't even going on at the level that you would notice. They're going on at the agency level, like at the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. Do you, do you remember when that happened? Some of you older folks, I remember when that happened. I think it was 1974 or the mid 70s when President Carter remember before President Carter we had no education department and we had no environmental protection agency but now we have both of these agencies that are a big pain in the rear uh, 
So we're coming back to that. We're, we're about done here, and I don't know whether I have time to address any other things in detail other than kind of just land the plane. Uh, let's see. Oh, let me just mention, Andy's been mentioning this on the 4th of November. The Blue Star Moms are going to be at Walmart in Yuba City from 10 to, oh, let's see, in November. No, it's not November. It's November 10 to 4. I think it's the first Saturday in November, 10 to 4 at Walmart, Yuba City. Blue Star Moms are selling wreaths that they're going to put on veterans' graves around the United States. First Saturday, November, 10 to 4, Walmart, Yuba City. I think that's it. I think I got that right. So uh, don't forget the to go to see Nate Black. And um, and don't forget to put this on your calendar, the Ripple Effect, December 8th through 12th. Great play. Listen, I'll, I never miss – well, if I'm out of the country, I miss them. But generally, don't miss the plays at Glad Tidings. You won't, you won't regret it. They're very fun. All original music, orig cast, real, all local casts are really cool. Great lighting, great music, great stage sets, 7 p.m. nightly. Uh, December 8th through the 12th. I got a few tickets left for the gun raffle. If you want to win a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 9mm plus three magazines, and each ticket's worth a, an hour of shooting at the, uh, whether you win or not, you get an hour of free shooting at Shooter's Paradise. Uh, you can call me up, 713-1838, and when I get off the air and get, get unhooked here, I will dial you up and, We'll rendezvous because we're doing the drawing tonight. So you might skinny in at the last minute. We're just selling 300 tickets. So you got one. All you need to do is one out of 300 and you're, you're good to go. All right. So, um, I think we're done. We got guys waiting around here to get in here and take my spot. So thanks for listening and we'll see you next week.